Everyone has their favourites, no matter what it may be. It could be your favourite food or even your favourite character from a TV show you like. This is the same for roller coasters and parks. Everybody has their absolute favourite rides in their favourite parks. And every time you adventure out to a new park with rides you've never been on before, it's always at the back of your mind wondering, are any of these rides going to make it in my top 10? Or will this be my new favourite park? There's always at least some debate about what the best ride in the world is. But here's the thing, it's all about what you like and something you love could be someone's worst nightmare. But it doesn't matter because you like it and it still belongs in your favourites list. Today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 rides and for me this list was like very hard to narrow down. I've been on over 150 roller coasters across both Europe and America and it's fair to say I do love them all but there's some that I have enjoyed more than others so this is my top 10 roller coasters. Starting off the top 10 rides list at number 10 is the big one at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Now, some may be confused by this when they see the rest of this list, but the big one really does hold a special place in my heart. I've been going to PB for years and the big one was the first coaster of its scale and size that I'd went on and it was the one that really kickstarted my love for coasters. The big one is an arrow hyper coaster that was built in the coaster year of 1994 and standing at 235 foot tall, when it opened it was the world's tallest ride and to this day it's still the tallest in the UK. Hitting a top speed of 74 miles per hour, the out and back layout measures nearly a mile long and the big one is another one of Arrow's masterpieces. Some may say that the big one isn't even considered the best in the UK but for me it's the legacy behind the ride and also behind the manufacturer. Arrow have been behind some of the theme park industry's defining moments. They broke down the barriers that made the way for the rides we have today. Coming in at number 9 is Mako at SeaWorld Orlando. Mako is a B&M Hyper standing at an impressive 200 foot tall. Mako was my first experience of a B&M Hyper and I was shocked at the amount of airtime this thing gave you. I felt like I spent most of the ride out my seat. Mako has the B&M clamshell restraints and this lap restraint changed my opinion on this type of restraint. I'm somebody who's always preferred the over the shoulder restraints as I feel like it's like a bit of adrenaline before the ride starts. As you're pulling it down you know what's about to happen. But with these clamshell restraints I never experienced what it was like to have these on a coaster of this scale. And just the restraint, no seatbelt, no nothing else added and the amount of airtime it allowed you to experience was unbelievable. I hadn't really experienced this feeling of freedom on a roller coaster before. And my favourite way to get the maximum airtime, this is a tip for you, is to have your arms up in the air but also your legs up as well and you generally spend most of the time out your seat. It's probably one of the most fun ways to experience the B&M hypers or their gigas, whatever it may be. It's just so fun to spend most of the ride out your seat. Coming in at number 8 is Kumba at Bush Gardens Tampa. Kumba is a steel sit down roller coaster built by B&M and at its time of opening in 1995, Kumba set the industry standards. It had the record for the most inversions on a roller coaster and the tallest vertical loop. Kumba is again a classic you can't miss. The layout is great and that vertical loop that goes over the lift hill is still a fantastic element. Even still to this day, Kumba never disappoints. It offers a great experience, even though now it won't have the most inversions or the tallest vertical loop, it still packs a punch. When I get to Bush Gardens, I'll always make sure to get a few rides in on Kumba. Coming in at number 7 is Accelerated at Knott's Berry Farm. Do you fancy going from 0 to 82 miles per hour in 2.3 seconds? Well, that's exactly what Accelerator does. Accelerator is an intimate launch coaster and is only one of four built in the US. Everybody seems to love this launch system and it really makes me scratch my head that it has been 11 years since Intamin last built one of their launch coasters. Hearing those metal plates drop to the earth, there is nothing more exciting than knowing that it's going to be instant speed rather than that long lift hill. The force you feel from that launch is unforgettable. Being pinned back in your seat, flying down the launch, then going over that top hat. It is such a special coaster. Coming in at number 6 is Tatsu at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Tatsu is a steel flying coaster and it is the tallest and the fastest flying coaster in the world. The cars allow riders to ride in a face down position for the ultimate flying experience. The strong layout is what helps set Tatsu apart from other flyers I've been on. Tatsu also sits high above the ground making that feeling of flying more realistic. This is one forceful ride. The dive loop on Tatsu is insane and unlike anything else I've experienced. The experience of flying feels surreal and this model definitely is one of my favourites. 
the adrenaline you feel when the seat puts you in that flying position is unreal. It really makes your dreams of flying come true. Coming in at number 5 is Montauk Bush Gardens. This is the best B&A Memphis I've ever been on and the theming is absolutely stunning. Montauk was the first inverted roller coaster to feature 7 inversions and was the first to feature an Immelman loop. Montauk is arguably one of the best B&A Memphis out there. It is such a strong layout with all those near miss moments and its fantastic elements as well. And the fact that Montauk is such an enjoyable ride that I could re-ride over and over. And despite it opening in 1996, it is still a fantastic ride and will continue to be for many years to come. Coming in at number 4 is Montezuma's Revenge at Knott's Berry Farm. A Swarskoff launch shuttle looper that opened in 1978, it was the first sly launched roller coaster in the world and it is the oldest shuttle loop roller coaster still in its original location. It is also the last ride of its kind operating in the United States. Unlike many other looping coasters, Montezuma's Revenge uses conventional lap bars to hold the riders in the seats instead of the modern over-the-shoulder restraints. It is another classic that I'm happy to have on my credit list. The loop has cool close contact moments with another ride. You can feel the force of that power cabled launch and that it makes an awesome sound as well. The launch system is so rare now it was a real pleasure to get the chance to ride one of these models. For me it can't be a classic. There are the rides that built the foundations for the roller coasters that we have today and it is a ride that I could happily re-ride over and over. Here are some honourable mentions of some rides that I was debating if they should have been in my top 10 or not. The first one is Nemesis at Alton Towers. Nemesis has unreal theming and is another fantastic b and invert. It opened in the year of the coasters in 1994. My second one is Dragon Challenge or Jill and Dragons at Universal Studios Orlando. In particular when the coasters used to run the course at the same time, this was awesome. There was so many close contact moments and my favourite being those vertical loops that made you feel like you could kick the train on the other track. It was a shame when they stopped duelling but safety always comes first and I was heartbroken when I heard that they were shutting for good but it does look like they got a good replacement and I can't wait to ride Hagrid's motorcycle adventure. Lastly we have Full Throttle at Magic Mountain. The force on that launch is great and the tall vertical loop straight after is so much fun. Overall Full Throttle is a solid coaster that gets overlooked at Magic Mountain because their lineup is full of absolutely outstanding rides. Coming in at number 3 is Viper at Six Flags Magic Mountain. You definitely can't beat a classic. Viper is an arrow looper which is the model that changed the theme park industry and invented the modern inversions. Viper opened in 1990 with 7 inversions and hitting speeds of 70 miles per hour. My favourite element on Viper has to be that back to back vertical loop, it's just a masterpiece. The back row is a little bit on the rough side and may leave you with a couple of bruises but that front row offers the perfect view of the beautiful arrow track that lays ahead. I have to say, I normally love the back row, but Viper showed me that the front row is also unreal. When I got the chance to ride front row, it was the best experience I'd ever had on any coaster. Viper is the picture perfect coaster and it looks stunning no matter where you stand. Coasters like this are in decline, so the fact I got the chance to experience a classic arrow looper and it definitely earns the spot it's been given. One coaster I always wanted to ride was Vortex at Kings Island, but when I found out it was closing, I started looking for other rides and as soon as I seen that POV of Viper, I knew it was going straight on the bucket list. And I've been so lucky that I've got the chance to add it to my credits list. Coming in at number 2 is X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain. X2 was Arrow Dynamics' last project before they became defunct and boy did they create pure insanity. X2 was the world's first fourth dimensional coaster. Yep, you did hear me right, a 4D coaster. X2 is a unique prototype in which the seats can rotate forward or backwards 360 degrees in a controlled spin. This is achieved by having four rails on the track, two that control the spin of the seats and they move up and down relevant to the main track. The seats spin using a rack and pinion gear mechanism. Although X only has two inversions, the flipping of the train makes it feel like a lot more than just two. X2 is full on insanity. It flips you in every different direction and you lose sense of where you are. One minute you're facing forwards to the next you're going backwards, heads facing the ground, rounded inversion. I love that feeling of insanity and the feeling that there was absolutely no control when in fact it is all like a controlled spin. I will always say that X2 is definitely not one for the weak stomachs but it's such a unique and cool coaster. 
And finally, coming in at number one is Twisted Colossus at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Open to the public in 2015, Twisted Colossus has a slightly different story compared to other new coasters, and that's thanks to the work of Rocky Mountain Construction, or as we all know them, RMC. Twisted Colossus was actually a wooden racing coaster before they converted it to the hybrid we know today. RMC came in and installed the Rybox track system, allowing the ride to gain a whole lot of airtime, something you don't normally see on Woody's inversions. This was one of the best experiences I've ever had on a coaster. Leaving the station you're met with bunny hills and even though they're small you're still out of your seat. And going up that lift hill with a train next to you that you're about to race is awesome. And then you hit that first drop which has an unbelievable amount of air time. The high five element makes you feel like you could give the riders on the other train a high five and the inversions are incredible. The Top Gun stall is probably my all time favourite inversion and it is the one I've had the best experience on. And then the boat Bonus, you get to experience the other side because this coaster's a Mobius look. Twisted Colossus really started my love for RMC and even just seeing that POV for the first time, I knew I wanted to get on it ASAP and I built up what the coaster was going to be like in my head for so long and let me tell you, it exceeded all expectations by miles. At this point, every RMC is on my bucket list. And the one I want to get on the most is definitely Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point, but RMC reminds me so much of Arrow, they aren't afraid to change the game and bring back a once popular ride in wooden roller coasters but adding that modern touch of steel to them. It really does create the perfect coaster in my opinion and I think RMC are one of the companies that I want the chance to experience every single ride they've done. They aren't going away anytime soon and RMC are going to be the coaster kings for a while to come and it's only going to get better and better. What a time to be a coaster enthusiast. Well, there it is. That is my top 10 coasters. Thank you for listening and I hope to see you next time on the Coaster Corner.